Hello, everyone. Good to have you tonight. Thanks for braving the, the weather. I think the weather is going to be a little bit damp when you go uh, out, but uh, you're, you are safe in this building. Thank the Lord. So hymn number 341, hymn number 341, and if you're able to, please stand. Hymn number 341, I think you know the song, Victory in Jesus. I, I, I want to say it's a good old Baptist uh, song, and but I think you know it. Welcome you that are online. Join with us if you can. Him, uh, verse 1 of hymn 341, Victory in Jesus. Here we go. I heard about... No, no, let's, let's start again, okay? I... Uh, Let's sing the right song. How about that? I heard an old, old story. So here we go. Try it again. On the first verse, sing it with me. Here we go. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me. Come on now and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood you know i'm so very thankful for songs that sing about our faith, sings about what we believe in. And I tell you, it reminds us of how good God is. Come on, give it all you got this time on the last. I heard about a mansion. You know what mansion that is. Come on now, sing it with me. I heard about a mansion He has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory here we go now oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me yes, he did. amen with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing Blood. Well, amen. Good to have you tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, thank you that we have victory in Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for what he did on the cross for us. And may we never forget it. Lord, help, help our lives to be shaped and molded by the gospel. And Lord, the wonderful truths that are found in your precious word. Thank you, Father, for tonight. May your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. It is, it is good to be with you tonight. And, boy, I tell you, it has been such a major, major uh, busy first week, first part of the week, and, and uh, more ways than one. And, and I tell you, it's good just to be able to stop for a moment and gather around the Word of God with God's people. And uh, praise the Lord, I tell you, it is, it, is, uh, it is a blessing. But hope and pray that you're doing well. Of course, I want to remind everyone about, of course, this coming uh, Lord's Day. Now, uh, of course, on Sunday and uh, the second Saturday 
of, of uh, uh, June, the second Saturday. Don't forget our men to men. And also the ladies will be meeting at that time as well. But men to men and the ladies meeting the second Saturday of June. So be mindful of that. Also, just to bring, make you aware of it, our VBS is uh, not too far away. And uh, there's some sign-up sheets out in the foyer for that. Uh, you can also register online as far as your, your children are concerned. And so be, be, be mindful of that. You can also uh, sign up yourself for if you want to help, you want to be a part. That's all there as well. And uh, so looking forward to our VBS uh, program and all that would God would have for us. I tell you, every year is different. And, uh, but looking forward to God, once again, blessing and using uh, uh, this church in that way. So, amen. Keep that in mind, okay? All right. Well, obviously, um, um, unofficially, summer is upon us. And yeah, I tell you, it's been kind of warm if you've been outside and uh, all of that. But uh, obviously, we want to we want to accomplish and do what God would have us to do. And I tell you, it's going to be a weird, weird summer. Uh, you know, one of the things is a lot of people are wanting to get away because of all the restrictions, and so they're taking advantage of that. But uh, I tell you, I just, um, may you and I just simply be faithful to what God uh, is doing, and, and don't, let's don't get caught up in things that will just take us away from the things of God. And uh, it, it's happening all over the place. It really is. And uh, actually... Um, uh, came across an individual even today that um, just really needs our prayers. And we'll be talking a little bit about that later on. But I tell you, uh, you ought to be thankful for what you have and uh, uh, just be faithful. Uh, uh, you know, let's, God is important. Amen. And let's, let's, let's make sure that he is in our lives. But uh, what a blessing. What a blessing. All right. Uh, men, let's go ahead and come and let's get ready. We're going to take an offering. On Wednesday night, we take uh, what we call an others offering. It goes to help others, first of all, in our church and then those outside of our church. And uh, it, uh, it truly has been a blessing and only, only eternity will tell how much of a blessing it's been. But it's because of your faithfulness in giving, because you've, you've set some aside and as a result of that, you were able to help others. So I thank you for that. If you give towards anything else, uh, just make sure you designate it, okay? All right. Let's go ahead and ask God to bless this offering. Brother Cross, would you lead us, please? Amen. God bless you tonight as you give. Good to have Cindy playing for us tonight, and uh, so thank you, Cindy. Uh, one more time, would you please? Hymn number five thirty-eight. Hymn number five thirty-eight. <clears throat> it's always it's always good to have a song in your heart. Always good, you know. You might say, "Well, preacher, I cannot sing." Can I tell you that has nothing to do with a song in your heart? Uh, you can hum, you can uh, you know maybe tap. I don't know, but. You know, just uh, have a song in your heart. In other words, uh, things that uh, encourages your heart uh, concerning the things of God and, and all that, I tell you. Well, this song is entitled, Blessed Be the Name. I think you know it. Blessed be the name. I tell you, truly God has been a blessing, but his name is a blessing for sure. Come on, sing it with me. We'll sing the first and the last, but here we go on the first. 
All praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave His Son for men to die that He might men redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, you're doing good. I think we do a little bit better. Come on, get a, get a little bit stronger on the last. His name shall be the counselor, all right? Might be a little tricky on, on watch as you, as you sing this one. We might, I might get off course, so help me out, will you? All right, here we go. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace, of all earth's kingdom conqueror, whose reign shall never cease. Amen. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> well, I have a good time anyway. Uh, I don't need. <laughs> I don't need an applause. I, I don't need to even sing on key in order to have a good time. So, but thank you, Cindy, for playing. What a blessing. How many of you remember Casey Klein uh, and the family? Uh, they are the ones there uh, uh, in Ukraine and, of course, had to come back to the States. And uh, so he writes, um, two months have now passed since we became refugees from our, our country of ministry. Um, and I, I, I apologize for probably not pronouncing this right, but uh, Kershon, Kherson, in the south region, one and a half hours from Crimea, is the city of my ministry, my church, and my house. Since March the 2nd, uh, Kershon has been under Russian occupation. Life <clears throat> was very hard for the first three weeks of the war, which included close quarters fighting in the city. And then life came close to what the government called a humanitarian cat catastrophe, when no humanitarian aid of food and medicine was allowed in. Many went weeks without electricity and water, and the Russian soldiers, soldiers have been very intrusive and invasive in everyday life. Uh, this particular letter has some pictures here, so, you know, they'll be posted out there, but you can see it later. In spite of all the above, we look at what God has done. One of our sisters who has hip... Uh, something, was taken in by some believers these first weeks of the war. Then when they decided to try fleeing to the West, they offered for her to leave with them. She didn't feel the Lord leading her in that way at that time. So she returned to her apartment. She must have had a good connection with the Lord to make that decision because literally the next day at her house, a random stranger knocked on her door. And after talking a bit, she got saved. Two days later, it happened again. Then again. Then again. Five got saved total because one lady listened to the Lord. Another sister who is a bit younger in the Lord and somewhat inexperienced in witnessing was out helping one of her grand, grandpa's neighbor. In the process, she gave her a large print Bible and witnessed to her, leading her to the Lord as well. 
in some supernatural way, despite the war and the strenuous situation, including having no local pastor in place, no church had actually grown, or the church has, has actually grown and matured these last two months. By the way, that's good. Praise the Lord. With all that said, life has gotten increasingly more dangerous and stressful under Russian occupation. Recently, there has been much talk of the Russians liberating uh, Kershaw, just as they have done to the Donbass and the Crimea. Their new pro-Russian government has been presented to the city. Locals have continued to protest, and there have been two pro-Russian city officials assassinated, shot while in their cars. Bombings outside the city are heard and felt around the clock. Citizens inside the city are constantly harassed, plus other things unmentionable are reported among daily. While during two months of this stressful kind of life, our church lady with the hip problem was suffering uh, with heart arrhythmia at home for a day before she could get help in the hospital. Praise God, the Lord took care of her, but we have continued to be concerned for the physical and the emotional well-being of our church members. This last week, I, received, I, I, relieved, I was relieved to hear that up to two aforementioned church ladies were eventually individually making plans to evacuate the city. Praise the Lord. God led them out at the right time in safety, and they are seeking refuge down the road in Poland and Czechia. One brother of our church remains and is likely to remain through come what may. We are still in continual contact and ministering to them all. So... He says, please uh, pray for uh, these dear people. Pray for Grishan. Pray for our family as we continue to do more for our Ukraine church while here in the States. Pray for my wife and her pregnancy. So that's the Klein family as they continue to minister, unfortunately, from the United States. And so it does make it quite difficult. But... Um, you know, God's doing a good job and working the hearts of people still. And I do pray for the, uh, that situation there in Ukraine uh, with the church and those believers, okay? All right. Well, what a blessing <clears throat> it is to, to be able to receive a report on, on what God is doing. And it's always... Say it's it's always amazing to me to hear, in spite of all that's going on, uh, God is still in the business of saving souls. God is still in the business of doing uh, what what He always does, and and to God be the glory for it all. Praise the Lord for that. We also uh, want to take some time out and pray for others, and so we're going to take some prayer requests. Uh, obviously, remember the Klein family. But if you have a prayer request you'd like to share at this time, let's go ahead and raise your hand. Anyone? Yeah, you're. All righty. Pray for Alexis, please. And all right, God knows what's going on there. Uh, Sister B. The Barger family. All right. Wow. A lady by the name of Faye. She fell and uh, she has not uh, gained consciousness from that fall. And uh, so uh, family's just asking for prayer. 
And uh, uh, Faye's ready to go home, if this is what the Lord would have. But So just pray for God's will to be done, okay? All right. Barbara? Yeah, uh, she, uh, Pat does have pneumonia. It's not that severe, but, uh, but Pat is doing a lot better than when she went into the ER. Uh, the medicines that they've given her has helped her, but uh, she still needs your prayers and, and uh, just pray for God's will to be done. And uh, they're going to keep her you know, a few days there in, in the hospital and then, uh, and then they'll evaluate from there, okay? But please continue to pray for Pat Hewlett, okay? Mary? Donna Dinock uh, had cataract surgery on one of her eyes, and everything went well. She's gonna, probably going to have another one in, in, in probably two more weeks. And uh, she's also recovering from hip replacement. And so she just loves surgery. She does. No, I, I don't know if she does or not, but bless her heart, she's had plenty of them for sure. And uh, so continue to pray for Donna Didock as she recovers. Uh, thankfully, things seem like things are going very well. Amen. Uh, Becky? All righty. Please pray for Sandy and, and also for Mike. Uh, uh, they are at home. Uh, they're doing well, but Sandy did test positive for COVID. And uh, so pray that, uh, you know, that goes well. Um, you know, just because you, are, you test positive, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have all the symptoms as everyone else that has had COVID. But, you know, uh, I believe Sandy has been vaccinated to the hilt. And so, uh, but uh, should they just ask us to pray for them. Uh, and, you know, and uh, I, uh, it, it, it really, oh, we were at the doctor's yesterday with Susan. Uh, she is, uh, she has a back issue and it was so severe we had to take her to the doctor and and, uh, of course, they make you wear a mask. I don't mind wearing a mask. But what I don't like or what I, I don't like to see is when they say, but if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. Can I tell you, that has nothing to do with you catching it or not catching it or spreading it or not spreading it. I don't necessarily know why they say that because the people that are vaccinated are just as likely to get it or not get it or pass it as someone that has a mask on. So uh, I don't know why they keep doing that. But uh, uh, we've got plenty of people in this church that are vaccinated to the hilt and they still get COVID. So uh, obviously, you know, if you're at high risk, it'd probably be good that you wear a mask. It doesn't keep you from getting the virus, but it will help. And that's all it is. It's just... You know, it just helps. But if you're vaccinated, you probably should wear a mask too. Uh, don't think that it, it will somehow, you're not, you're not going to get it because that's not the case. All right. Uh, yes. Amen. 
All right, um, got a list here, so please continue to pray uh, for um, uh, Jean and Lillian. Uh, Jean fell yesterday. Thankfully, he has not broken a bone, but it's just uh, a constant thing. And so just pray for God's protection and pray, pray for that family. Also pray for Vicki. Uh, she, uh, she, uh, she just needs our prayers physically. And then also for Barbara and for Steve Jenkins. Uh, Steve is really having a difficult time. And it's, it's, uh, it's just a difficult time all around. And so uh, we love uh, the Jenkins and I'm sure we want the best for them. And, uh, but they need our prayers at this time, okay? And so be, please be praying for them. Um, uh, anybody else, you have a prayer request tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, thank you. There was a <clears throat> post uh, sent out uh, to pray for the Seagull family with Darlene. She is just really, it's getting um, more difficult. It is... Um, they just they just requested prayer. All right, so she has been dealing with cancer for a while, and uh, it's just been taking her the toll on her. And so just pray for Darlene Sego, and for God's will to be done there. Okay. Thank you. Continue to pray for Henry as he heals and recovers from his uh, foot uh, uh, surgery that he had. All right. As I mentioned, pray for Susan. Um, I met a man today, and I'll just call his name Kelly. And um, he requested prayer. He's um, uh, <clears throat> he's a 52-year-old, and uh, he's here, uh, kind of kind of lost kind of caught, kind of, you know, supposedly helping someone. And, and anyway, it's, it's, just, it's just a bad time to be anywhere and not in your home, not, not have a job. And, and, uh, and so he just requested prayer. He, uh, he had um, reached out, uh, and a lot of people do. Uh, you know, you call and I, I'm to the point now, I, should I answer the phone? Because I'm afraid of who it's going to be. And, and a lot of times it's just people asking for help. And uh, the stories and all that, it's just, uh, and so, so I, uh, you know, I helped him a little bit. And, um, and so I told him I, I would mention you tonight. And he said, thank you. So Pray for Kelly is his name, 52-year-old man, and uh, just, just kind of lost. So, all right. Barbara? All right. I would ask that you pray for a man by the name of Ed. He's, a, he's been here at the church before, and he's struggling. He lost his wife in January, and, and we need to be praying for him. And uh, so, see, I believe prayer works, folks. And uh, so, let's pray for Ed. Okay, anybody else? Two years old, young girl by the name of Marie, Maria. Uh, she has a, a rare cancer uh, in her jaw, 
And so this Friday, they're going to do a surgery, an eight-hour surgery, to try to remove the cancer, which unfortunately will be removing the jaw and the teeth and all that's there. And, and then no doubt she'll have to have some reconstruction surgery uh, to try to replace that. And she's only two years old. And um, so uh, let's pray for these doctors and obviously the family as well. And uh, Maria Grace, correct? And uh, two years old, having surgery Friday, okay? All right. Church, I want to remind you to be praying for uh, our country. And, uh, uh, and I just, I just, I just, uh, just need to throw that out there because I know you already know, I do. But uh, let's keep it before us and pray in not only for our country and its leadership, pray also for uh, our police officers. And, uh, of course, uh, Mike had, had requested prayer for our, our Greenwood police in particular. Um, I was told by a group of ladies this morning that uh, there was, uh, do you call it a raid? It was a drug bust. And uh, supposedly, uh, the early this morning, there were a large number of cars in our parking lot. Uh, apparently, the police were using this as a sort of a meeting place. And, and um, anyway, it was local. There's some drug uh, activity in this area. And anyway, they caught them. And it was a pretty major bust. And so... Uh, I'm very thankful for our police officers, very thankful for the jobs they do and how good they do it. And, and, um, and we ought to be praying for those on a regular basis, uh, not only our police officers, first responders, uh, you know, paramedics, things like that, our firemen, uh, our fire people. I don't know what the right pronoun is, but anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, people that put out fires, both male and female, but anyway. Um, let's uh, pray for them and doctors and nurses. Appreciate what they do. And uh, so, amen. All right. Uh, we're going to take some time and pray. We, we did take a longer time on this prayer request, but let's take some time and, and uh, pray for these that you've heard, no doubt others that you have on your heart. And then I'll close this in prayer. We'll get right into the word of God tonight. Thank you.
Father, thank you tonight that we have gathered here tonight. I know uh, with uh, un, unsure about the weather, but Lord, thank you for those that were able to come. And, and Lord, I just pray that uh, tonight there were so many requests were made and, and Lord, of great concern. And I just pray, Lord, uh, that your will be done. Lord, I think of Pat and Lord, that you would just uh, have your will and way there and touch her body, help her to, to, to get better, get stronger. But Lord, we know she's in good hands and we know that you'll take care of her. So I do pray for her and, and her family. Pray also, Lord, that tonight you would meet with us as we look into your word and Lord, help us to be what you would have us to be as we look at it and, and, and apply it. And, and Lord, may our lives change. And may we be different because of you. And uh, Lord, may your will be done tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good to have you tonight. Thank you so much. Now, take your Bible and turn to the book of Psalms, please. And Psalm 59 is where we're going to look at. And uh, I tell you, I've been uh, uh, sort of uh, preparing and for this uh, and for some reason, I don't know why, but it's never, I've never been able to get it to where, uh, to where I, I thought it should be. And so, so we're not going to get very far tonight, but uh, uh, we hope and pray that God will speak to your heart. You know, by the way, Psalm 59, and uh, let, me, let me read our text and, and, uh, and then we'll uh, go from there. Verse 1, Psalm 59, verse 1. Deliver me from mine enemies. Are we there? We all in the same place? Okay, thank you for bringing your Bible, by the way. It's important, it really is. Um, here uh, we find that uh, David writes and he says, Deliver me from mine enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. Now, listen carefully. Pay attention. I don't want you to miss something here. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me. And behold, thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit, awake, he says, to visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. They returned at evening. They return at evening. They make a noise like a dog and go around about the city. Behold, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For who, say they, doth hear? Let's pray. Father, may your will be done tonight and Lord, help, help our thoughts to be on, on thee and and Lord, maybe we find ourselves in this situation. May your will be done, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are, if you are familiar with, with what it's actually talking about, you'll find, and you'll find a lot of it in the introduction of this particular psalm. Uh, but it is, is a psalm about David and his experience with Saul. You know who Saul is, don't you? Saul, King Saul, but also his father-in-law. And this is David. And we're, we're probably more familiar with the whole account with the javelin. If you remember the javelin that was thrown at David. 
And if you remember the account, it was an evil spirit had come upon Saul. And so it was David that was called upon to what? To play the harp so that that evil spirit would leave. And so, but if you know the account of David and Saul, you know that Saul did not get better. He got worse, even to the point that King Saul tried to kill David. And then David had to flee. Well, in Psalms 59 here, it is that period of time where the soldiers are looking for David. And so they come to his house where he is staying. And David has to flee. And so, but he sees them. He hears them. He hears that they are around the house. He knows this. And so he must flee for his life. And so this particular psalm is in reference to that. But why in the world would a man turn his back on probably one of his favorite soldiers? Why in the world would someone try to kill a man who was his best. David could not understand all of that. Why in the world would my father-in-law try to kill me? I mean, what have I done to him? If anything, David was quite loyal to King Saul. And added probably at his beck and call. But still, for some reason, now David is having to run for his life. Actually, tonight, what we're talking about is betrayal. In other words, David felt betrayed. And probably wondering, why in the world is, is he doing this to me? You know the phrase, he stabbed me in the back? No, no, not literally, but figuratively. We are normally stabbed in the back because of why. But normally it's because we've trusted somebody. We believe that they've had our backs. But unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way, did it? And, and as a result of that, you know, sadly enough, we maybe promise I'll never do that again. I'll never trust those people again. But unfortunately, we do it again and again and again. And, you know, probably the connection to all of that is relationships, right? Right? We want relationships, we, we, we are in need of relationships, and we want relationships to work, and yet you don't know who to trust. Even though our experiences has warned us over and over again, you know, warns us of the dangers, yet we keep setting ourselves up to get hurt again and again and again because of relationships. You know, David probably is questioning a lot of things right now in Psalm 59 about trusting, to be willing to trust someone. Uh, you know, but you know that, well, I don't know because I'm going to be betrayed again. I'm going to get hurt at some point in time. And so a lot of times 
our response is that, no, that's all right, I'm not going to do that. You know, a lot of times what happens is because we surely don't want to get hurt again, we don't want to be betrayed again, and so a lot of times what people do is they begin to build walls and they keep people at bay and don't touch, I just don't want that to happen. Of course, we know not everyone we trust turns on us. You do know that, don't you? But it just feels that way, though. Causes us not to, not to do what, what we want to do. When we hurt with pain, it can dominate even how we think. It really can. We are reluctant to even pray because of the pain and the guards we put up. And uh, it truly becomes a major issue. You know, and I tell you, I... I to the best of my ability, and I tell you, I don't know the pain that a lot of people feel. I just know me, right? And you just know you. And I tell you, I don't know the pain that some people have gone through. But I do know this, that pain can, listen carefully to what I'm about to say to you. Pain can be very dominating. That is, uh, that is why I, I would at least explain how people that seem to be so normal consider suicide. It is because of the pain. Unfortunately, it's way too personal. There's a particular individual that, that I knew because of this church. And this particular individual took their life. And it was because of pain. I, I, no, no, please, please. I, I have my feelings about suicide and they're very strong feelings. I don't, think, I don't think anyone should take their lives. But at the same time, I am very much aware of pain. And I can see how strong it is. To the point that we do things that we probably would not have done before. We consider things that we haven't done before. I cannot tell you how many times I've counseled people who because of some kind of pain, whatever it may be, whether they're losing a loved one or, or experiencing a trauma or how they were raised. Anyway, they had such pain that a lot of times they can hardly function today because of the pain I don't understand all that I really don't I'm not a I'm not a, a psychiatrist or anything like that I just know that it's real and that it's there but I don't also believe that God is unaware of that Do you hear what I said see I also don't believe that yet that God is you know you know, there in heaven saying, oh dear, I don't know what to do about that. See, I don't believe that at all. I believe God has answers for life and I believe that without a doubt how critical it is that, that you and I, no matter what we go through in life, that, that we've got to consider God. And, and, and more, I, I tell you, it is, it is so devastating when it comes to life and how fragile it is, and we, we know based upon the Word of God, it is very fragile. And you and I get to the point that we can get so hurt and we can get so betrayed, if I may use that word, that we, 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 we don't even want to do what's right anymore and we don't even really want to pray to God anymore. We find in our particular text it's a prayer, by the way. It's, uh, you know, prayer and trust are two inseparable stratas of the same substance. In other words, praying is, in a sense, trusting your back to God. Hey, you know, I know people may have failed me. People may have stabbed me in the back. But we know, don't we, that God wouldn't do that. 
And yet somehow or another, I find so often that there are people that are so angry with God, they don't even trust God anymore. And that's sad. I'll tell you now, God is your friend. Whether, you, whether it feels like it or not, he is. Pain distorts our perceptions. I know, you know, I've even said this to people. I know, I know you're feeling kind of bad, but please don't, don't, don't think that God is like that because he isn't. Don't think that God will abandon you because he won't. A lot of times people just don't see that. Pain is very powerful. Betrayal can eat your life away. We can lose sight of reality and struggle with the ability to even pray. Tonight, in Psalms 59, we see David struggling. He has been betrayed. And now he's running for his life. And he refuses to let it go. So, I want to, I want to show you. I, I don't have much time, but I want to show you a few things. So let me, let me begin now that you have a little bit of history. Let's read verse 1 again. Deliver me from mine enemies, O oh my God. It is a prayer, right? Yes, it is. Deliver me from mine enemies, O oh my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. By the way, did you notice the short uh, commands that he is saying to God? Well, let me show them to you. Deliver me. Defend me. Deliver me. Save me. Come on, God. Let's go. So often we, we I mean, I, 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 I'm a professional at helping people. And I say that not to be, but I, in other words, I've helped a lot of people. You know, a lot of times what is common with all of them? Now, preacher, now. Come on, now. I need it now. You know, have you ever seen that sign that, that's posted in windows and it says something like this, you want it when? Because people are so demanding because they're in a tight you know, situation because they've screwed things up or they've messed things up, but now they want you to fix it now. Or they want, to help, want you to help them now. Of course, they didn't give you any time or any notice or anything like that, but now. Can I tell you, David's desperate. And it's almost as if he's barking orders to God. Deliver me, deliver me, save me, come on. I wonder if God knows his situation. I bet he does. You know, it's really not, God, I need to make you aware of this. No, that's not for God. He already knows it's for us. I believe that's exactly what, what David is doing. And, and, and God knows exactly what to do. And he knows that David does need help. But the thing about it is God knows what he needs help with. So often we don't know what we need, even need help with. See, one of the things that we are distorted with, uh, we, we lose a sense of, uh, and that is this, we lose the sense of who God is. What do you mean, preacher? Look, Look as I read on. Verse 3. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. In other words, he knew they were there. They were around his, his house and they were waiting. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, not for my sin, O Lord. As if God did not know that. But he does. They run, prepare themselves without my fault. Awake. Are you kidding me? 
you know, you know who you're talking to, right, David? And he says, awake as if God is sleeping. Do you really think, David, that God is sleeping on the job? Do you really think, David, that God does not know that you need help? But David says, come on, God, awake. Awake to help me. One writer actually said, you know, David has not been getting any sleep during this period of time. And it's as if, God, no one's getting sleep here, but apparently you are. Come on, David. That's not God. Have you ever prayed something like this? Oh, God, where are you? God, why aren't you helping me? So often in our pain and in our suffering, we don't see God clearly. We don't. We don't understand. And so, so we find here that the Bible says uh, in verse number uh, four, they run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me. In other words, as if God, get up, get up. You're sleeping and I need help. And behold, you know what the word behold means, don't you? See, look. As if God has his eyes closed. As if he cannot see. Can I tell you, he sees more than you and I will ever see. He knows more than you and I will ever. But, 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 but isn't it true? We, 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 we get confused and, and we don't see God as he really is. Verse number five, the Bible says this. Thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel. Oh, oh no, not again. Awake. To visit all the heathen. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressor as if God needs to be told that. Come on, God, let me tell you what you need to do. When's the last time you told God what to do? Well, I didn't mean it, but we do, don't we? We tell him, we tell him not only... Where we hurt, we tell him what we need and how it can be fixed. We just kind of lay it out for God. Have we forgotten who, we, who, we, who we're talking to? Pain can do that, apparently. Verse number six, the Bible says, they return at evening. They make a noise like a dog go round about the, the city. Verse 7, behold, they belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips for who, say they, doth hear. You know, tonight... We'll, we'll, bring, we'll pick this up again next Wednesday, but tonight, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know, but if you and I are not careful, we'll, we'll get a distorted view of God. We'll begin to, you know, for, I, you know, and we know better. We know that David knows better. Amen. He does. Actually, to tell God to wake up. Come on, God, I need help. You know what that says is, you know, God, I want you to do it now. And I'm hurting here. I don't know what to do. But oh, I tell you, we're going to continue this, Bond, but in spite of how we feel, in spite of even the pain that we have. God is still God. 
and God is faithful. And God wants you to continue to trust him. In spite of the pain you're going through, in spite of what somebody else did, hey, King Saul is the one that stabbed him in the back, not God. And let me conclude with this, and I'm done. I have met more people that are so angry at God because of what a human did. A lot of people are angry and they won't even go to church because of what Christians have done. And yes, we are representatives of the Lord. And you and I ought to be careful about how we live our lives because we do represent the Lord. So that's a good reason for you right there. But personally... Just because of what somebody else has done to you doesn't mean that's God. And that is something that all of us must deal with. Don't blame God for what somebody else did. And don't say, God, you're just like them. Because he's not. He does not have to be awakened. He does not sleep. And by the way, he sees everything. He knows exactly what you're going through. Maybe our prayer should be this. God, help me to see you for who you really are, especially in the midst of the storm. Just because someone stabbed me in the back, does it mean you will, God? Because you have my back. And he does. He does. Would you bow your head, please? Lord, help us. Lord, I don't know the pain that people are going through. I know a lot of people that have pain, that are dealing with difficult situations. But Lord, may we not distrust you and may we not run from you. But Lord, may we run to you and help us, Lord, to be faithful, knowing and believing that you're going to be who you say you are. And you're not going to be like this world. So Lord, help us to trust you. Even when people betray us, you will not. Thank you. You are who you are. And I'm so very thankful for that. Help us to build our lives upon that truth in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.